previously on HVACR videos. We're gonna have to clean this one for sure. This guy's toasted. Forget the squealing sound, because that's just a bad belt. The motor's making a buzzing sound, and it's not spinning properly, and we have the right voltage. Gee, man, this is so annoying. Don't be lazy, guys. Look at there's no caps on either one of those. This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. All right, today we're going to be repairing this unit right here. Uh, while doing another service call We found that it had a bad indoor blower motor. So here's our blower assembly and it's really dirty So we're definitely going to be pulling this guy to clean it um, The blower motors right there the easiest way to do this is just to go ahead and uh, pull the top off the unit So we'll go ahead and unscrew everything And do all the wiring I brought another person with me so it makes it easier We'll get the blower assembly pulled out the motor changed out and then we got to dive into these guys because you know, we got caps missing. I'm sure we're gonna be low on charge. In my quote, I went ahead and put gas in the quote, even though I don't know. I told the man, you know, the, the people that if it doesn't take it, I won't use it. But so we got the top off and look at this, man. It's really rubbing. That was the shroud doing that. As far as the condenser, I mean, it's dirty. It's not too bad, but we're gonna clean it anyways. All right. We're doing good. We'll make sure we test to see if there's pressure in both systems before we took the top back on. Um, just changed the filters last week when we condemned it, or when we condemned the motor. So now we're gonna get this guy out. This thing's being a pain. Kind of crazy. If you look down here, I don't know if the can't, I mean, it is just caked down in that drain pan. This is unfortunately is a place you can't get to unless you, uh, pull the top off the unit so we're gonna try to clean all that stuff out if we can looks like there's a belt box or whatever this heat exchanger is about ready to fail I don't know if you guys can see the color change down here but I don't see any holes yet but it's gonna be there very soon um, all right so we got the blower assembly out we got the motor up there we're gonna vacuum this out in here and then get back down into here get all this cleaned up clean up the side insulation over there there and then our blower assembly is over here we're gonna go clean it out so this thing I mean stuff is literally falling out of the blower assembly right here as we're turning it it's just caked so we'll give it a rinse and then put cleaner on it if necessary this doesn't seem like grease so it might come clean that is a lot of dirt coming out of this thing Look at that stuff, man. It's crazy. Got the new foam sprayer here. This thing makes short work, makes it foam up really well. So it's not ideal. I've said it in a recent video too, getting brightener cleaner, you know, on bearings and stuff. But when the customer's not doing regular preventative maintenance and these blower assemblies get this dirty, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. So get this guy, let it soak, rinse it a couple times and then, uh, Hopefully it'll be all cleaned out and give the customer probably another year or two before the bearings fail, I would guess, but you know. Didn't really plan for this, but it's kind of nice. The water leaks out of this thing so slow that I'm able to build up the coil cleaner and the squirrel cage is just sitting in it right now and I just rotate it every few minutes. It's just piled in there. Pretty cool how that worked out. Bam, look at that all black water. Nasty. Look at that chunky, milky goobers. Pain. Over here is pretty nasty. Look at those chunks coming out of that thing right now. It's from this back behind the thing. This stuff's coming out now. The water pressure is being funky right now. They must be using their dishwasher or something. Look at that. I guess that's good for coil rinsing though. <laughs> we don't overflow the drain pan, but nasty. This guy is about as clean as we can get it. I mean, without going too crazy, the drain pan's nice and clear coils you know it's not perfect on the other side but i'm not going to try to make it perfectly shiny you know you can only do so much we're still got a little bit of vacuuming on the side went ahead and got on the condenser coil now this coil is pretty damaged on the outside um we split it here because we got the top off we can get down inside and check it out it's not too bad put a little bit of cleaner on it got all the way around went ahead and rinsed out all this area right here and the um combustion area 
over here went ahead and rinsed that out too um, not that they're using the heater right now anyways but yeah blower assembly is all dried out units all dried out the customer did complain apparently we got some water dripping down into the ducts but it's since stopped um, i'm just trying to wire the new motor right now um and then i'll set it up like we had before oh the other thing too is we need to vacuum out in here we'll get to that but i'll set the motor up there set the blower assembly in so we're just wiring it all right now so we got the motor wired and ready but i wanted to show you guys something i don't know if you guys can see this or not but this whole cavity right here is bowed in and that's one of the things that i've always said i'm not a super fan of on these carrier package units is they don't make the areas and the brackets and things with the blower assembly strong enough so this because this is bowed in you know nothing's ever going to be straight on this thing so you can only make it so perfect blower assembly's back in it was kind of a chore but we got it um everything's kind of coming together we're going to put the pulley on the new motor so what i do is i take the old one and i match up the opening to the new one and then uh, we'll see where that gets us so i'm trying to get a ballpark and you guys can see that see how the motor pulley is pitching in and it's just all out of whack and that's because the blower assembly is just all out of whack these carriers are never and this is even the reinforced sometimes it's because of this bracket but this is the new reinforced bracket so it's got to have something to do with that whole cavity caving in. All right, we're good. I set the pulley depth. This is not going to be perfect, but it's as good as we can get it. Um, it's not, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. It's not absolutely perfect. It's still pitching in a little bit. The problem is, is like I think, okay, let's go ahead and shim these. But you got to take this whole assembly off because the nut keeps spinning on the, or the bolt keeps spinning on the back of this so it's a pain in the butt so i'm not gonna spend too much more time on it it's about as good as it's gonna get we're just gonna work on securing the wiring so it doesn't rub out now all right as i was pulling everything out of here this limit switch fell apart in my hands for the heat but we're not going to use that right now so we'll deal with that later i just secured the wires over here um, but what i wanted to point out is we secured everything so the wires are not zip tied they're zip tied to a zip tie so that way the wires are not going to rub on the all thread they're secured, safe. They're not rubbing on any metal right here. You know, we, we, we do that to try to prevent any other issues in the future. So everything's nice and snug, belt's nice and snug. Um, we're gonna start putting things back together slowly, putting the top back on and all that. Putting everything together and the run cap for the condenser fan motors, I figured I'd test it and it was low. It was only reading like eight microfarads on each side and it's supposed to be a 10. So I sent someone to go get a new run cap for it. Um, those contactors, I mean, they don't look the greatest, but I don't think, I don't know, they're not that bad. It's not really part of my quote, we'll test them. We're, I got the blower running, and it's running in the right direction, I confirm that. But here's the problem, we're over amping, we're allowed to run 7.5 amps. I matched that pulley exactly to what the other one was, so why? Why are we over amping? We've got three phase power, I did test that. What we need to do is we need to walk right over here and this panel's still off. Guys, it's so important to make sure the panels are on the unit when they're running. If you're trying to do a PM on a unit and you have a panel off like that, now that's just half ass on, but it's probably good enough. It's gonna affect the operation of the blower motor. Notice how the current draw dropped immediately and it's still dropping. I'm gonna put that panel on the rest of the way. Same thing would happen if we had this panel off. It's set up to run under a certain static pressure, okay? And if the static pressure is too low, the motor theoretically could overcurrent, okay? And that's what was happening. It was too easy, there wasn't enough resistance across the ductwork, and we're overcurrenting because of that. Now we're undercurrent, we're allowed to run 7.5 amps, and we're good. So, um, we're going to fire up the cooling. I gotta figure out what I gotta do. I probably gotta log into their internet thermostats, fire up the cooling, and we're gonna to proceed to check first and second stage. I guarantee they're gonna be low on charge because those caps are missing. I went ahead and sanded up the line so that way my clamps, because I use the field piece job link probes with the rapid rail technology thing, so they gotta have clean copper for it. So I cleaned that up while I was waiting. Yeah, we're just moving along. Oh, and we're flashing because of that limit switch. So I do have to fix that too, so. So right off the bat, this is the first stage and it's not looking all too bad. I mean, the superheat's a little bit on the high side, but I'm still giving it time to stabilize out. 
Got a 40 degree evaporator temperature. This is R22. Um, temperature split is decent. I still gotta flip over to the second stage, but airflow is decent. Someone was asking how I calculated airflow and measure quick. It's a, uh, a calculation that they figured out using the, um, the psychrometers. So there's no special tool. It's just an estimation for airflow. Um, let's flip over to, I'm not gonna add any gas at this point. Let's flip over to the second stage. Give it a second to catch up. I don't know why it takes so long for it to catch up, but okay. So the superheat's still a little high on the second stage. Again, we're gonna give it some time to stabilize out. But these numbers aren't looking horrible. Remember the subcooling on these things? You gotta be careful because it's using discharge line pressure instead of liquid line pressure. So it's not an accurate subcooling. So you gotta take that carefully. All right, we're adding a little bit of gas to the second stage because uh, we're still running a little bit high on the superheat and everything else is looking pretty good to me. So we're just adding a little bit of refrigerant. Um, throttling it in nice and slow charging with my smart probes so you guys ever have uh this is a brand new cylinder of 22 we had a um even though it's in a recovery cylinder we had one of those where the 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 cap got stuck and uh i wish i would have gotten a video of it but i've had it happen a few times where the cap is it's broken off so what i do is just take a screwdriver and get it really hot and melt it into the the on off cap thing and then you just got to put it into a recovery cylinder because you can't close it anymore because you're using a screwdriver so but we are looking good second stage i'm not going to put any more gas in it i'll find out in a minute how much but i probably put about a pound or two in there um second stage is the one that was missing the caps the first stage didn't have to add any gas that one was fine so all right we are going to uh wrap this one up uh take our gauges off close it down and then we're going to double check to make sure we get screws in all the panels and everything but this one's looking good all right i turned off the gas turned off the gas valve disconnected the heating here so that way the heater won't try to fire um put new caps on all of these guys new brass caps so we're good to go we're putting this guy back together and that's it all right so it wasn't too difficult this was a follow-up obviously to our original call where we came out where they were complaining the dining room was too cold and the thermostat had fallen off the wall that was the you know this was one of the units that I found while doing that so we got approval and we came back in and went ahead and pulled the blower assembly assembly obviously as you saw what I want to point out is how important it is obviously I'm always preaching the whole big picture diagnosis thing okay but how important it is to try to think ahead you know when we find a blower motor that's failed or going bad or whatever you know, look around, like in this situation, I looked at the blower assembly and the blower assembly looked really dirty. So that changed how I quoted this entire job because if I was just changing a motor, I would have just brought one service tech. But because that blower assembly was really dirty, I decided to bring another service technician with me and that was part of my quote. So as a service technician, when you're out in the field, you know, if you're not doing your own quotes, someone in the office probably is, and they don't know everything. You know, and it's really easy for us techs in the field, you know, when we're out there, we're thinking in our head, yeah, I'll quote this and I'll quote that. And then if you're doing your own quotes, you sit down and sometimes you'll remember the stuff that you're like, oh yeah, you know, we're going to need a second person. But if people from the office are doing the quotes, they don't know unless we tell them. So you got to make sure you look at everything and say, hey, you know what? This thing's going to be an all day job. We need another tech. We got to pull the top off. You know, it looks like it's low on refrigerant. And again, the whole big picture thing, um, you know, I kind of looked at it and I said, you know what? There's caps missing from that compressor. There was no way for me to check the charge before, but I was able to, you know, add a little bit of extra refrigerant and put a caveat in the, the quote saying, hey, you know what? Some caps were missing. It might be low on charge. If I need it, I'll use it, you know, and I, I try to do the whole big picture diagnosis thing and try to give the customer a big picture quote. And on this one, they bit and they let me go ahead and do the repair that I wanted to do. In hindsight, I probably should have gone and changed those contactors too. Um, but they were okay. They tested okay. They didn't have a voltage drop or anything. But yeah, you know, it probably would have been a good idea to go ahead and get those out of the way. But we'll keep an eye on it. You know, the customer's starting up their PM program. They actually just ordered PMs for all of their restaurants in our area. So, you know, it'll be nice to be able to get a running list of things and I'll add that one to my wish list, you know. 
Um, but yeah, I really, really, you know, try to give them all the information and try to remember all the information myself. So that way we can come in and do the best job we can. I'm not perfect. I'll never be perfect. I never pretend to be perfect. I just trying to do my best, you know, with all the information that I have. So I really appreciate you guys making it to the end of the video. Thank you so much. If you haven't already, please go check out my website, hvacrvideos.com hats, beanies, sweaters, shirts, any support would be great. Uh, you don't have to, but I mean, if you want to check it out. Um, also other ways you can support the channel. Uh, if you're interested in purchasing any tools, check out truetechtools.com. There's a link in the show notes. Um, if you use my offer code, big picture, you get a discount on your order and I get a commission, a small commission. It doesn't change your price. Um, and if you guys know what you're going to purchase too, shoot me an email and I can actually generate an affiliate link and the affiliate link helps me a little bit more. You still get the same discount and everything. It just, you know, helps me get a little bigger commission basically. Um, live streams Monday evening, 5 p.m. Pacific on YouTube, work permitting. And then also uh, we go live on the HVAC Overtime channel about 6.05 p.m. Pacific time on Friday evenings. Myself, Bill, Adam, and Joe, we kind of recap the week and, you know, just kind of talk about everything. I missed the last show because I had to work, but, you know, sometimes it happens. But, hey, really appreciate you guys and uh, we'll catch you on the next one, okay?